Good afternoon and thanks for joining us today. My name is Lori Gentile, Director of Client Services for the Women's Resource Center, and I'm going to be your host today. This Career Connections is um, very near and dear to my heart because I spent most of my career in the tech industry, starting in sales and um, co-founding a software company, and then spent most of my time in um, learning and development. Um, I had the wonderful opportunity of taking early retirement from Intel, and now I spend my days at the Women's Resource Center helping women find their own success. So before I start, just a little bit of housekeeping. We are recording this presentation and it will be available on YouTube and on our website within 48 hours. And then we'll also email everybody who registered a link to the presentation as well as um, the recording and all of our contact information in case you want more information. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the, the lines are all muted, but we really do want to hear from you. So we'll take all of our questions at the end, but feel free to open up the Q&A box. It's labeled Q&A and it'll be at the bottom of your screen pop your questions in, and then we'll field them all when, as soon as the presentations are over. Um, so I just want to thank you again for joining. We have a great lineup today. Um, we're gonna start with Ava Pantalaglu, uh, Head of Client Services at Dealers United, one of our great local companies. And she'll talk about her career journey as well as some careers at Dealers United. Um, then we have Jennifer Danis, Unified Communications Manager at South Tech, another great local company. She will also talk about her career journey and uh, different careers available at South Tech. And last but not least, Daesh Bagley, who is the Director of the Coding Academy at SCF, and she's going to talk about her career journey about different types of careers that are available in the technology field, as well as training that you'll need um, to, to attain those jobs. Then we'll have Q&A and then we'll wrap up and then I will ask you to complete a survey. Um, we take our surveys very seriously and that's what helps us um, to decide what content and how to present it. So here we go. Um, just a few minutes before I introduce our speakers to give you a little bit of background about the Women's Resource Center. We have been empowering women since 1979 in both Manatee and Sarasota counties. Our programs and services are offered either at a very low cost or no cost um, to our clients. And we offer mental health counseling, career services, educational scholarships and educational programs, legal and financial consultation and education and wellness programs. And since we closed our doors, unfortunately in March because of COVID, but almost every one of our programs is offered um, remotely. We have three centers. One is located in Manatee on West Manatee Avenue one in Sarasota on South Tuttle, and one in Venice on Route 41 South. And our career closets, we have career closets in our Bradenton and Sarasota locations, which provides clothing um, free um, for anyone uh, who needs it or is interested. And it's both casual as well as career clothing. And our career closets um, are open Wednesdays from 11 to 3. We also have um, our, our unique boutique, um, which sells uh, gently worn um, designer clothing at very good prices. And um, that's actually how we fund um, our programs or partially funding for our programs and services. And that's located in downtown Bradenton and Unique Boutique is open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 11 to three. 
And just a little bit about our career programs, since we're talking careers today, um, we have uh, career coaches available to help you with your career search. So um, they offer everything from career discovery, if you don't know what you want to be when you grow up, through resume writing, through how to conduct a um, online job search, through interview practice, all the way through salary negotiations. But we meet our clients where they are. So if you already know what you wanna do, um, we can help with resumes. Or if you are you have all that down and you just want some you know, guidance on an online job search, we're here to help you with that. We also have career centers in each one of our three centers. Um, of course, they're closed now, but it's a drop-in place where you can use our computers. Um, we have resume writing, um, computer tutoring, um, and instruction, and you can just use our computers for your job search. Again, the career closet, and then workshops like this workshop today, um, the career connections where we connect our clients um, and attendees with either um, job openings that are available in the community right away to training opportunities that would prepare them uh, for jobs. Um, when we closed our doors uh, last March, we created this coronavirus uh, local resources and we also send every Monday a uh, resource report which uh, provides information, everything from emergency services through financial, through educational. There's also a section on employment where you can find links to companies that have jobs available right away. And with that, I am so excited. Thank you so much, um, Ava, for joining us. I wanna turn it over to Dealers United. Of course. Thank you, Lori. So happy to be here today. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm with Dealers United and I'm head of client services. And as Lori said, I'm going to go into a little bit about me and my career journey, about Dealers United and who we are, and then some open positions for you. So why work for Dealers United? First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my history. Uh, I actually worked in career services a few years ago. And I made a very good longtime friend who was my manager, head of career services at USFSM. And her name's Tony Repo. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have had that internal connection to meet my CEO now, Pete Peterson. So I was applying for lots of different jobs halfway through my senior year of college, trying to find the perfect fit. And I found Dealers United on Indeed. I applied and because I had that internal connection, Tony put in a good word for me and I ended up getting the position as a Facebook specialist, which was super, super exciting. I was the only one of my friends that was still in school and had a full-time job, which worked out because I was doing night classes. So that was awesome. I quickly turned into a Facebook guru, you could call it, and then became head of Facebook or a Facebook team lead, they called it. And then a few years later, now almost four years with the company, I'm head of client services. And that encompasses not only the Facebook team, but the performance managers who talk to the dealers, the creative team who creates all the awesome graphics and videos and the co-op team who gets money back for our clients. So super passionate about Dealers United and about automotive marketing, but most importantly, very passionate about furthering people's careers and personal and professional development. So now I'm going to go into a little bit about Dealers United. We have three core values, uh, jump in, learn and lead, and at light. So jump in, think of that as like no one asked you to do something, but you came in and you brought a concept, you brought an idea, and you started something new. Um, maybe it wasn't even close to in your job description, but you had an awesome idea and you were forthcoming for it. So that's what jump in means. Uh, learn and lead. So we're very big on certifications, which I'll get into at the end of the presentation. But say you learn something from one of those certifications and you create a training video for the entire company. That's learning and leading. And again, no one asks you to do it. It's kind of just one of those impromptu things. And last but not least, at life. My personal favorite, uh, the example I want to give you here is our co-op manager, Murray, is in Peru right now. He's been working from there for two months. 
Um, he's got awesome Wi-Fi there and everything. He's there for family. So we don't mind where you work from as long as you get your work done. So that's a little bit more about our core values. We're a growing company in technology, specifically automotive marketing. And most importantly, we maintain a strong culture. Culture is everything to us. It's actually more important to us than the experience that someone has. So one of my favorite stories to tell is a little over a year ago, um, one of our performance managers, who is now a performance manager team lead in just a year, came in and in the interview, you know, we, we knew immediately from the resume and the conversations that he had no experience in automotive or marketing or anything like that, but that did not matter because we knew the second we met him and in that interview that he would be a fit for our culture. He actually had over 10 years of experience in customer service at Best Buy. So we knew that he had that customer relationship kind of building experience and we hired him and now he's one of the leaders in the company. So super cool story and just shows you that it's not always just about experience. It's about, you know, sometimes the people you know and your personality and letting that shine. Also, make sure to know that our mission at Dealers United is to guide and inspire. And that doesn't just mean guide and inspire the people we work with, like our clients, but also our internal team members. There's a lot of benefits for working for us. Um, insurance benefits are wonderful. Working from home, really now it's work from wherever. So again, you know, if you have to travel and you want to go see family and work, we allow that. Um, we also allow flex time, which now we're calling unlimited part-time off. So basically, if you have a doctor's appointment, you have a vacation, totally fine. It's unlimited now. Uh, continue learning and education. We're going to get into that in a little bit later, but we really incentivize our employees to further educate themselves in the field through Facebook certifications, Google analytics certifications, and beyond. Very important that we have a strong culture because we like to you know, have fun with, with our jobs, right? We don't wanna just do what we love, but we wanna do what we love with the people we love. And most importantly, family first. So that includes, again, flexible, part-time off, unlimited, like I said, maternity and paternity leave, healthcare coverages, work-life balance, uh, future planning, so retirement, 401k, all that stuff that's super important to get started early, respect and trust for our team members, and what's a really fun and unique one is celebration for life accomplishments. So you get a new home, your first house, you have a wedding. We, we like to give gifts for that and, and support our, our team. So what open positions do we have? Super important slide. Um, so performance managers, they are our biggest team in the entire company. The goal of a performance manager is to manage the relationship of the client, make them happy make sure we understand their goals, their pain points, and we solve for them. And that's starting at $40,000 a year. Facebook specialist. So those are the ones that are actually creating the ads, creating the copywriting. What are we going to say and who are we going to say it to? That's the goal of a specialist. And that's also starting at $40,000 a year. Marketing content creator. So with this position, you'd be coming up with content for the marketing team, whether that be blogs, emails, right? Graphics for those different things, case studies for our clients. That's what that marketing content creator does. And that's also starting at $40,000 a year. Senior backend developer. So with this position, you'd be working on the APIs. What automations are you going to create to solve our problems, save more time, right? And that's starting at $70,000 a year. I want to make note with from here below on the slide, these are all ones where experience is needed. Whereas the performance manager, the specialist and the marketing content creator, a little bit different. Um, because again, if you have that customer service experience or you have graphic experience, that'll work. For a senior backend developer, definitely wanna have experience working with those APIs. Technical project manager. So this is a super cool role. Basically all the different projects that we wanna create as a development team to automate processes, you'd be managing all those products. Uh, projects rather, and products. Um, and that's also starting at $70,000 a year. Channel sales representative. So this is a sales rep that'd be selling to people, different agencies, and the on-target earnings for this is seventy dollars to $80,000 a year. 
direct sales representative, you'd be trying to find dealers to become our clients. You'd be selling direct to dealers. And that is also the same 70 to $80,000 on target earnings. So that's the positions we have open currently. We're always looking for awesome people though. So I encourage you to apply no matter what. And I have some suggestions for you. Um, as I said at the top of this, make connections. Not only is it important to make the connection, but to maintain them, right? Use LinkedIn, go to events. I know we're all virtual right now, but we're having this event. So find those different events that you can go to to meet people. Step outside your comfort zone. So even if you think that you can only go in direction, one direction, but you know that your desire is to go in another direction, believe in yourself and step outside your comfort zone because you never know what can happen. Write down your goals and achieve them. I like to physically write things down and have them on the computer because studies show that if you physically write something down, there's more of a chance that it'll happen. So I encourage you to write down whatever your personal and professional goals are because it'll be more likely that you'll achieve them and make sure that you stay on top of yourself and make sure that you're working towards them every single day. Now, a lot of you have heard this one, but if you do what you love, you don't work a day in your life. And I believe that and I, and I live that. I love my team and I love my company. So I don't feel like it's work. I feel like it is at life because I love what I do. So make sure that you go into a career not for any other benefit other than your own happiness and your own goals. Last but not least, communication is key. So ensure you're following up with the companies you're interested in. Some of our favorite interviewees and applicants are those that follow up they write an email after they do the interview, you know, that's thoughtful. They, they try to contact us after, connect with us on LinkedIn. Just show that you're super interested for the roles because that's what's going to set you apart from anyone else just applying for a lot of different roles, right? All right, so if you're interested in any of the careers that we discussed today, go to dealersunited.com slash careers. Everything is right on there. There's also longer descriptions for you to read through. And last but not least, Facebook Blueprint, super valuable training. The story I told at the top of at the top of this was about Best Buy, right? He had not direct experience, but he did have customer service experience. But what set him apart was that he already took the Facebook Blueprint exam prior to coming in for the interview. So he was super overprepared. So I encourage you, if there is like further training for the companies you're applying for, see if you can do it ahead of time, because that'll really wow the people that are interviewing you. Thank you so much, everyone here today and the Women's Resource Center. Again, I'm super honored to be a part of this, and I hope to be a part of more things like this. And I encourage all of you to reach your dreams. Thank you so much. Next is Jennifer Danis from South Tech. Sorry for the delay. Thank you, everyone. Um, wanted to just say what great suggestions from Ava. I think those are really great and wanted to say hello again. Uh, so I'm the Unified Communications Manager here at South Tech Solutions. Uh, we're a managed service provider, so we're an IT company, but we do a little bit more than that. Uh, we handle all of our clients' needs. We ensure uh, anything they need we can take care of and we're very proactive. We try to keep their issues to a minimum and they pay us a monthly fee uh, to, to make sure they don't have to ever worry about anything that could happen. Uh, South Tech has been around for 27 years. Uh, we've spent a lot of time developing our processes and working proactively with our clients to ensure that they can use the technology they need to focus on their business and become more efficient. Um, our goal is to take care of all of their needs and we really work on ensuring that those needs are met. Um, as for how I uh, got into Unified Communications, so originally I had no technical background. I used to um, wait tables in restaurants and bartend. Um, and, and then eventually I became a catering director and managing director in restaurants, uh, primarily working nights and weekends. And eventually my daughter became school aged. I realized I'd never see her unless I got my nights and weekends back. So um, I, I started working different jobs, trying to find what would fit, what worked 
worked and one day a friend recommended a customer service position. It happened to be at a traditional telephony company, so business telephone systems. Um, initially, I trained end users and um, you know, how to use their phones and I would meet with them to figure out you know, which phone would ring, what their greeting would say. And I began to realize that I couldn't really help them until I really understood what the system could do. And that's how the technical started. Uh, so I began to learn the technical and then um, became a telephony te technician where I was actually doing the installations. At one point, um, you know, in, in this time, there were IT guys and they worked on the computers and then there were the phone people and we worked on the phones. And then as technology involved with cell phones and texting and, you know, everyone really wanted to be able to communicate with whatever they're using and really unified those. So that's how Unified Communications was born. Um, after about seven years, South Tech decided they wanted to expand into um, business telephone systems and I made the move. Um, so as that began to grow, so did Unified Communications and uh, so has our team. So we spent a lot of time developing the processes over the past seven years to make sure that we can deliver solutions that they need. So South Tech, um, why to South Tech? Uh, we're continually voted one of the best places to work in Southwest Florida. Uh, we have a great benefits pack package, uh, health insurance, three of the five plans we offered are company paid. We have profit sharing, 401k match, tuition reimbursement. Uh, we do offer three weeks PTO that includes sick time, obviously accrued um, with your start. Um, another item, we also have 10 paid holidays a year. Uh, so a lot of different um, benefits that come in. Um, but you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves is our team and our culture. And, you know, much like uh, Dealers United, experience is important sometimes, but so is also making sure that you're a good fit for our culture and our team. Uh, you know, when times get tough or when we're busy, you know, really coming together as a team and, and working through those tough times is very important to the type of work we do. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we believe in is shining bright. Uh, so balancing our faith, our family, our firm, uh, firm being the business. So we really care about having all of our people excel. Um, respect, having respect for others, the welfare of others, integrity, teamwork, and education. So education is very important. Um, even, even after you're hired on at South Tech, we always are looking to improve. Technology is always evolving. Uh, not all of our candidates need to have um, all the technical certifications, but they are important. So what is an ideal candidate? Well, they have great communication skills. Uh, they're a smart, quick learner. They're detail-oriented. They're accountable. And they have a whatever it takes attitude. By whatever it takes, you know, some it, it, it's not about, oh, this is my job or, oh, this is, is your job. It's about being a team. So we help each other whenever it's needed. A thirst for knowledge, passion for success. Now, obviously, we are an IT company. So, you know, technical knowledge is important, training on computers. Um, so, Comp TIA. NAP Plus, Security Plus, those are some certifications that are offered at a lot of local places that you could start working towards those certifications. Any Microsoft or Cisco certifications you have too would also be important, but it is about the person. We can always train you. If you are the right fit for the company, then, then that would be where your career would start. <laughs> Um, as far as the different fields that we offer, uh, so we have our client support team, and that team is really the front lines who answer the phones, who help any, any of our clients that have a real-time problem. Uh, we have network admins and escalations engineers. Now, these um, have years of experience. They have a lot of cert certifications, but this is kind of where a lot of people end up. Uh, now, being a network admin is probably one of the most challenging aspects of modern IT. Uh, they're assigned to each one of our clients, and they're responsible for maintaining their client's network, ensuring that all of their needs are proactively met, and when big issues do happen sometimes, they're there to help. Um, we also have a NOC, our Network Operations Center. 
these are our behind the scenes guys. They don't talk much, you don't see much of them, but they are making sure that everything behind the scenes is working well. Uh, so as technology evolves, there's always a firmware update or you know some something that's happening. So they do a lot of backend monitoring. Unified communication. So obviously, I, I touched on this briefly when I was talking about my journey, um, but but it's business telephone systems and business phone systems have gotten pretty complex, especially with needing to text um, and you know video chat. All of that has become integrated. Um, and then obviously we have human resources, finance and business development. Uh, the one thing I wanted to touch, you know, obviously there's outside sales, but our client account managers, uh, this is another area where you don't necessarily need to have a lot of certifications. Um, you're, you're serving our clients, you know, they, they work with our inside sales team, making sure clients are need, they deliver proposals, uh, they, they, have meetings with the clients. They're really just there for the clients. They're kind of the, the customer service center. So wherever the client needs to go, they point them in the right direction and give them what they need. Uh, so what would your journey look like? So at South Tech, obviously sometimes we do have candidates that have experience and we have a need for a higher candidate. But we do really like to, to offer our 90 day internship. Uh, typically we think of it more as an apprenticeship. So some candidates are right out of school and some candidates are, are just beginning their journey into IT. Uh, they're, they're currently taking classes to, to learn IT and, and get certifications. And our goal is to really advance these interns into a full-time employee. So a 90-day internship, if it's a good fit and we based on the growth of our company, you would usually go into uh, specializing in one of our departments and you'd begin learning and, and getting more familiar with our processes, our tools, our client base, and then at that point you would move on to greater responsibility. So with time and experience, you would grow into an IT professional. Uh, you know, obviously our network administrators, those do sometimes take a few years to get to, uh, but our client support specialists, all of those are, are just great options, um, you know, to, to get there. So right now uh, we are currently hiring. Uh, so we are looking for interns, uh, UC implementation specialists, our system support specialist, and our business development consultant. Now our interns and our UC implementation specialists, these are more of entry level positions. Uh, now with the UC implementation specialist and the intern, as I previously mentioned, you know, being a quick learner, having that right culture, being a good fit is very important. Uh, so it's not necessarily required that you have a lot of certifications um, already, but if you're on your way to getting those, that is probably good. Um, the system support specialist and the business development consultant, those are more experienced positions. A system support specialist would already be taking calls, answering phones, able to assist clients with their computer issues, level one kind of technical support and troubleshooting. Our business development consultant, that is more of an experienced outside salesperson, meeting with new clients, building those relationships, and being able to technically speak about the offerings that we offer. So lots going on in South Tech, uh, and we're very uh, thankful for the Women's Resource Center to be a part of this. And just wanted to thank everyone for their time today. Um, but I would like to introduce Daish Bagley. So she's the Director of IT at the Coding Academy uh, at, at SCF. And she is here to tell you about how to get all those certifications I mentioned. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. And thanks so much to the Women's Resource Center for having me. I am Daish, and I am the new IT Coding Academy Director at SCF on the Bradenton campus. Um, as many of you know, SCF has three campuses. Uh, we have the Bradenton campus on 26th Street. We have the Venice campus, and we have the Lakewood Ranch campus. The Coding Academy is located on the Bradenton campus. So I just wanted to give you a little bit about myself. I, um, I started out as a traditional college student at the University of Texas. I thought I wanted to major in computer science and I was all excited about it, only to find myself probably one of the few girls in the class, one of the few African-American uh, 
girls in the class. You, uh, one of the only African American girls at the University of Texas, and the classrooms were huge, you know, and there were a lot of people. And the professors were, let's say, very interested in getting tenure and writing books, and maybe not so much interested in answering questions from 500 freshman physics students. So I did not do as well at the University of Texas as I would have wanted to. I had some great experiences, discovered that I loved computer science, um, but I ended up becoming a mom and a wife before I finished that degree. We moved to Florida and I found the University of South Florida in Tampa. And I also found Hillsborough Community College. So I took some classes at HCC. I transferred over to USF. I got my computer science degree and I loved it. I will say that SCF does offer that small classroom environment. It offers professors who are interested in student success and we have a range of learning opportunities. Um, I then became a STEM entrepreneur because I wanted to stay home with my kids. I didn't necessarily want to, um, to be gone all the time. And at the time I told y'all I was already a wife and a mom. So I already had kids to take care of. And so we started a business where I could be with my kids called Tech Play Zone. And I had to learn a lot. I had to learn robotics and I had to learn game design and I had to learn all these different things that I needed to teach young people. Um, but we took time to do it and it was really fun. So I, I got some training in there to start the company. I became a volunteer for FIRST Robotics and I became a program manager at Hillsborough Community College. So I went back to HCC as a way of giving back to what they had given me all those years ago. Um, and then I found myself um, here at SCF. The position became available. They were looking for someone that had coding experience, someone that had run a coding academy, someone that had um, been a trainer. And, and during my time as an entrepreneur, I was also a trainer around the state of Florida. And it was just a perfect fit. So it was a roundabout way <laughs> to, to get in here, um, but it, it, it's, been, it's been fun. So what I really wanted to talk about at the Coding Academy is that we offer training for those positions that Jennifer and Ava mentioned. Um, we have career, um, career training, but what I've discovered is not everybody understands what all the different areas are, right, in these new collar jobs. There's application development and cybersecurity data science and analytics and full stack web development and networking, right? You hear all of these terms and you say to yourself, what in the world? How do I know which one of these I would really want to be a part of? How do I know what, what I'm good at? And so that's one of the great things about the Coding Academy. We are going to be offering some career exploration um, workshops where we will allow you to have a taste of the various uh, technology sectors just to see if it's something that you're skilled with, right, or something that you like, or something that there's a need for in the community. So we've heard from South Tech and we've heard from Steelers United, and I got to tell you, I've heard from quite a few other industry, industry partners in Sarasota and Bradenton, and they're telling us that they are looking to hire people with certain skills. Not to say that you have to have a complete background, right, in, in the skills, but that you're interested in taking the training. And so just to give you an idea, application development is mobile development. You know, it could be development for uh, an app. It could be a desktop application. It involves those APIs that Ava mentioned earlier, right? The application um, programming interface, an API where you get two different applications to work well together so that you can automate process. So that's application development. Then there's cybersecurity. It's not just for the military anymore. Everybody wants to protect their equipment. Everybody has a network that has to be protected in some form or fashion. And there's training that goes along with it. Data science and analytics would be for that person who's detail oriented. You like finding patterns. You like seeing how there are trends and different things. And, and you're able to put information together to see a bigger picture. Data science is um, a newer technology, and, and it's, it, this is one of the ones that I think is on the cutting edge that lots of organizations are going to want to use, and maybe they're not hiring for it now, but I got to tell you, just like with robotics and artificial intelligence, it's coming. Full stack web development is just what it says. It's those people that enjoy making websites, 
you understand the front end with uh, the language that's involved, HTML, and you also understand the back end, database design and collecting information and putting systems together so that companies can, can have an online presence. And then finally, networking. And that's um, a little bit of what uh, Jennifer talked about as far as the CompTIA certifications and understanding computer systems or, or technology systems in general. So where do we go? I wanna tell you that at the Coding Academy, we are going to have a career exploration workshop. And if you are interested in that, please reach out to Lori at the WRC, reach out to me. My information is at the end of the slide. And let me know that this is something that you would like to do so that we can begin to explore which career might be best for you. So then we talk a little bit about um, what we do to actually get started. There's career exploration and there's the training. We want you to practice. Um, Ava mentioned that the person who came from Best Buy, not only did they have great customer service, right, from their previous um, background, but they took the time to take a certification course, the, first, the Facebook Blueprint certification course. Well, that's what we offer. We want you to have training, we want you to have practice, and then we want to mentor you. We've met with the industry professionals, we know what their cultures are, we understand what they're looking for in candidates, and we want you to go into your interview strong. The same experience that you would get from WRC as far as mentoring and resume building, we're going to help you with your, um, your interviewing questions. We're going to help you to understand what they're looking for at that particular company. And then we help you with job placement. We want you to contact us to see if you qualify for financial aid or for grant funding, or if we have um, generous donors in the community that are willing to sponsor. It happens all the time. Next slide. So here's an example of training that leads to job placement. This is what Jennifer was referencing, the CompTIA. We offer this at um, the State College of Florida currently, right now. This is a training that allows you to either look at network certification or security certification or your A plus certification where you understand about servers and, and routers and, and desktop PCs and, and just uh, technology in general. Normally that course would be upwards of $1,200. We are offering it for $199. That includes the exam if you take the self-paced course. If you take the course with me on, on campus, in person, it's $500. And again, we would look for funding sources to help pay for that certification so that you can take the class and take the test. Next slide. So here's my contact information. I am Daesh, I'm at the Coding Academy in Bradenton, and we are looking forward to helping you transition from one career to the next or start a whole new career. You let us know what interests you and we will work with you to get you where you want to be. Thank you, Lori. I'll turn it back over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Daesh. Okay, I just wanted to quickly put up everybody's um, contact information one time. You may have seen it. Annie popped that information into the chat box so you can copy it from there or um, also we will be sending out an email to everyone who re registered and attended with links to this video, as well as all the materials and all of the um, contact information. And you will receive that in your email boxes um, within 48 hours. So we have some questions coming in. Um, one is, um, what career is best for women who have babies or small children? Who wants to take that one? I, I can take it, Lori. Okay. So great question. Um, there's, there's many careers that you can look into now, especially with what's going on in the world. So many things are work from home or work from wherever. So we actually have many employees at Dealers United that have small babies and children. Um, and because you can work from wherever, you're able to uh, take care of them whenever needed. And also with the unlimited part-time off, you know, if you have to take them somewhere, that's totally okay too. So there's definitely more options for you as well, but just wanted to let you know that, you know, we, we encourage that and we're definitely family first. So. Yeah. And truthfully, I think, you know, technology careers lend themselves um, to be able to work at home. So 
I worked at home for over 25 years. I ran a worldwide team, flew all over the world. Um, for a long time, I was a single mom. My kids were at home. And um, the, the, one of the wonderful things that I found was, you know, I could pop upstairs, put dinner in the oven, and we had a home cooked meal every single night. So for me, the tech, you know, the, the um, you know, opportunity I had to be both um, home with my children, as well as uh, being there for them, and then do the work I got to do from a home office was was wonderful. And then Lori, don't forget about that entrepreneurship option of starting your own company, doing something that you love. It will involve technology more than likely, right? Because you yeah. got to sell your goods and services some kind of way, but entrepreneurship is always a great way to go. Yep, yeah, it sure is. Okay, if you already earned a degree and have experience, but been had been out of work for a number of years, what path would you recommend? Can I take that one? Absolutely. Awesome. I would definitely take a path of um, career exploration. You Let's say you have that customer service background, but now you're ready to try something with web development or you have a web development background and now you're looking at data science. The, the career exploration and then taking the training that leads up to that job is a, a full, full, um, full way of getting exactly what you need to transition well because we know what industry partners have told us that they need, and you can find it online as well. You can find what industry members are telling you. We're looking for people with these skills, and I promise you there's training out there for you. Good. Um, do any of the training courses require any special prerequisites or background? So our training courses, um, most of them do not require special background knowledge, like the Comp TIA, for example. You could come into the doors not knowing a single thing about a single piece of hardware, and the training that we give will prepare you for that. Then there are other courses. You know, we sort of talked about that full stack web development, right? There's a little bit of background knowledge you're going to want to have about HTML and CSS, but we have those particular prerequisites for free. Nobody pays for an intro prep course. You, you get that intro prep ahead of time. And from there, you take the training courses that you need to get your certifications. So we can, we can definitely talk about which courses require pre-existing knowledge and which courses don't. Terrific. Um, and this is also for you, Daesh. Would your academy be available for dual enrolled students? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. We offer uh, industry certifications for dual enrolled students and we try to fit because we are here Monday um, through Friday. We can be here on Saturdays. We can be here in the evenings. We fit the schedule of our students. Good. And someone had a comment, it says, um, sometimes when you say you need a little bit of experience, but when I apply, they say they need more than that. I can take that one. So when I applied for Dealers United, it looked like there was a ton of experience that was required. But then when I did the interviews, you know, they saw who I was, they saw the experience I had, which was with, you know, a little bit of marketing, mainly retail, restaurant, and working at career services at USF. So I think no matter what it says, try it anyway. And like we said earlier, you know, if you could take a certification in advance, or if you could do anything that sets yourself apart, that can always help. A lot of times people put that in the description. And then if they meet you and they see the talent that you have, you know, it'll change. Right. And not every job is going to require that extensive experience. Sometimes, you know, a lot of us talked about, Jennifer talked about it. I talked about it you know, there are roles where you don't need experience, where they're entry level, right? And you can just show up with a smile on your face and let them know what you know, and they may take a risk on you. So I'd encourage you to apply anyway, and look for also positions that are a little bit different and, and support that kind of entry level application. Thank you. Hey, Lori, I think the other thing I, I want people on the webinar to take away is that it pays to be able to tell your story. 
and tell your story as it relates to the job opening. So the mom with the young babies, right, at home right now, um, there's a story there. There's a story of multitasking. <laughs> there's a story <laughs> of budgeting, I bet. There's a story of um, having a smile and being patient and persistent. And, and so when you are at the WRC and you're, and you're getting, getting access to the resources there, be sure to help, get help framing your story, your background, your experience. So it fits in with what the company that you're, you're aiming for looks for. Because when it says experience required, sometimes experience comes in different forms or fashions and you just gotta be able to tell the story. Absolutely. You know, we find that when we're developing resumes, the same thing, like the skills, you know, you have to peel back the onion and just look at all the different things that you've done because there's so many skills in there. Thanks for bringing that up. That's just such an important and wonderful point. Um, our next question is, I, ha I have a master's degree in information technology and project management, but no hands-on experience. And it looks like um, they're asking, um, are there entry level uh, positions open that would give training, I guess, to get that experience? Well, I can take this one if you don't mind, Lori. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned for, for South Tech, uh, we actually do hire a lot of interns where they go through a 90-day apprenticeship program, and, and it's better to make sure there's a fit that, um, you know, the, the intern and South Tech work well together. So, so that really is an entry-level position, you know, as far as getting the training that you need to get to the next step. Um, you know, I, I think it is important because you do have a master's degree and you do have so much book experience and, and knowledge that you you're very upfront with your interviewers you let them know that hey look I, I want to start out I want to be entry level and I really want to learn this from the ground up great thanks Jennifer. I would add on to that too I have a, a son he has a master's degree in computer science and he's programming right now in python but he's interested in and I'm probably going to mess it up, but it's J-Node or something like that. And he's like, mom, if you offer a class in J-Node, I'll take it because that's what I want. I think I need to fill my gap. And so there are some, some people who have those, uh, those graduate degrees that just need a little bit of hands-on experience in order to get them in the right direction going where they want to go. Great, thanks for that. Um, uh, which IT certification do I need to continue my work as a QA software testing engineer career? That's a great question. I don't know that answer. I would have to look it up. Okay, we can send out some information when we send out the replay link. Um, let's say... You know, I'm just going to say because at Amazon, I worked as a QA, a quality analyst, but it was listening to telephones, you know, listening to other people's phone calls and then analyzing their calls. And then there's Tervis Tumblr in, in Dennis Tervis. They have quality analyst people too, but it's looking at the from, the from the manufacturing side. So when we think about quality analysts, I think you sort of have to narrow the scope and then see which direction to go. Good, good. Thank you. Um, and what is the competition like uh, for technology jobs? Um, are there a lot of um, entry level jobs available? I would, I can answer this one, Lori. Um, so there's definitely a lot of competition for jobs, but in my presentation, that's why I really encourage that you set yourself apart. You write those follow-up emails, right? You, you tell your story you know, like we said before. Um, and there is there is gonna be positions that are entry level. Um, a lot of times at DOJ United, we'll go through 50, 60 applicants and the way we set them apart is, you know, how did it go? Did they follow up? Did they, were they unique? Were they finding ways, like you said, that they can fit their story into the role? Um, 
I, there's so many different ways to set yourself apart, but I'd say that the most important is that communication and follow up and talk to multiple people at the business, not even just the people that you interviewed and ask them questions, right? Don't just let them ask questions to you, but we're really impressed in an interview when they come with questions, they come prepared and also know about the company. Don't apply to a million jobs. And then when they call you back, oh, well, I got to look into that. Let me look into that. That never goes well. Make sure you do your homework. And I'd, I'd say those are all, all things that are very important to, to, aside from the competition, set yourself apart. So. Love that. Um, the next question is, um, someone's asking, um, I am on dis disability and I can't do any physical work. Um, so I know I need, um, to, uh, you know, to gain employment, I know I need, uh, you know, PC skills and would be interested in um, uh, taking the CompTIA, but where should I start? Are there some basic skills I should know, you know, kind of before I start that certification? I'll start this one and Jennifer will probably add on to it. But at SCF, we have what's called the Digital Foundations course at the uh, um, Coding Academy. And Digital Foundations is a course for, for those who may not have worked with technology as much as you would have liked. So you're interested in knowing more about uh, a PC, um, operating systems, um, accessories. And so then from there, once you have a good grasp of just the foundations um, of technology, you would probably move on to a, a comp TIA. Jennifer could probably add on to that though. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I think any preparatory courses that Daesh was mentioning earlier about, um, you know, them being free that you can start before you get into the comp TIA. Um, but as far as specific tech fields, you know, I, I do think a basic understanding of Microsoft Office typing, you know, the keyboard, monitor, computers, the basic is very essential, even for an internship. So, so if you are really struggling in some of the basics, then I would work with days or online um, training to, to get that those completed. Okay, and um, is your profile on Facebook Blueprint or LinkedIn good to have for your resume? So um, if you take that Facebook blueprint exam, before you take the exam, there's uh, tons of courses to look over to get yourself familiar, and then you can take the exam. I do encourage that if you get that certification and you pass, put that on your LinkedIn, right, under the little certification section. Um, and yeah, I've seen many resumes that come with not only the general contact info, but the LinkedIn, um, because that's, that's just going to add to your resume if you have your LinkedIn on there and make sure it's, you know, up to date and truly tells your story well. I hope that answers the question. Good. I don't see any more questions coming in, but I, oh wait, wait, wait. Um, oh, that's a similar question to what, to what we answered before. Um, yeah, it looks like that's all the questions. Thank you so much, that was terrific. Um, Again, this is our contact information that will come um, within 24 to 48 hours in an email, along with a link to, the, to this webinar um, and a copy of this um, presentation materials. We're getting a lot of thank you so much is in the Q&A box, ladies, so thank you. Um, when we close down the webinar, a survey is going to pop up on the screen. We really would appreciate your feedback. Um, we take it very, very um, seriously. And that's how uh, we work to continuously improve our programming. So if you would you know, just take a few seconds to fill out that survey, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much to our presenters. Um, I really appreciate your time um, and all the work you put in to helping us with this presentation. And I hope everybody has a, a great rest of the day. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody.